and welcome back to devlog. In the last part, I made a video about an incredibly niche aspect of my game's specific dash movement that was really unnecessary. And in this part, I'm going to work on the new acrobatics features. As always, why add such a new feature? That's because the design of my game is that each level or chapter has one specific gimmick behind its gameplay. The gimmick behind the current chapter that I'm designing for the demo is acrobatics features. These involving some rings that you can hold onto, poles you can spin off, ropes that you can grab onto. I'm actually using the ropes and platforms that swing back and forth. In this video, I will be covering the rings, poles, and other poles. There's two different kind of poles. For this chapter's mobility movements. So the way these systems first start to work is by checking if the player has interacted with them, and if the player has interacted with them, this is just the player touching them while the player is in midair. Then the player will be set onto these acrobatic systems. And this is pretty easy, just detect if the player touches it and the player is in the correct state. There's no player input for detecting when to use an acrobatic system, there's no real complexity of coding or inputs for the player to perform, you just touch the thing and then you use it. Once you have done this, we will then just have the player move to be in the correct place for these objects. And then all player movement is derived from the acrobatics itself. Having the player move to stick onto these objects is very simple. I parent, child, I child the player to whatever the acrobatic they have been set on. Specifically the acrobatics player pivot, which is an object used in its coding for movements. And then if the acrobatics is a pole of any kind, I will check if it is a horizontal or vertical pole. So if the pole is vertically up, I will have the player move to the acrobatics position, or the pivot position where the player should be, ignoring any x differences. So we can be anywhere on the x-axis for a pole that is horizontal, or if a pole is vertical, we will ignore any y differences because the player can be on the top of the pole or the bottom of the pole, but as long as the x is nulled out to whatever the zero position of the player pivot pole is, then they're in the right position. This probably doesn't make any sense, but don't worry about it. All I do is I have the player stick onto the pole and then I will move the player's position in a smooth setup so they look like they're actually setting onto the pole. I will talk about the poles first because they are very simple in comparison to the rings because the rings have slightly more complexity to them. The poles are very simple. If it is a vertical pole, this is a pole going upwards, we will either press left or right to rotate around the pole left or right. The player builds speed either left or right based on the pole. This blends into an animation. This plays a visual particle effect, which I'm going to be honest, maybe the best part of this entire feature, just the visual particle effect. I don't particularly like particle effects, but I think this one looks pretty good. The player builds speed based on this, and then once the player jumps, they can either jump without any speed, meaning they will just fall off the pole normally, or they can jump as they have built speed, and they will be launched off the pole. That's it. And this is another one of those systems I have made for my game, where the actual complexity of the system is very, very, very simple. This is primarily a visually interesting system that is obscuring the fact that the code setup of this mobility is very simple. We just have a number tick up based on the player's inputs, based on the player's facing direction, based on the acrobatic poles direction itself. If the pole is a horizontal pole, for example, we'll do the exact same thing, but we'll just build the velocity either up or down, so this is altering the player's saved gravity amount. It doesn't really matter because these are changed when the player jumps anyway, so don't worry about it. But we'll just take this up if the player is holding up, down if the player is holding down, back to zero if the player is not holding any input at all. Very, very simple. The complexity of this system is I have the poles rotate with the player's momentum. So if you are holding up, we have the pole rotate upwards, both giving feedback to the player that the pole is moving upwards and the player is rotating upwards, but also that the player is straining the pole because they are trying to force themselves upwards with their swinging. The same way if the 
poles facing downwards or left or right. This is very simple, I have the pivot point of the poles rotate based on a value from 0 to rotation. So if we're facing left, this will rotate left, if facing right, this will rotate right, based on the intensity of the player's mobility. So if the maximum speed the pole can reach is 12, at 6 it will be halfway between these rotational values. We'll also blend it into an animation which gives the impression of the sticks and poles you are holding onto bending in an awkward manner as the player is forcing themselves on them. But this is just an animation that is blended into. Basically I'm just blending the force that the player has on moving onto the pole into this animation and there is no complexities there. This is I cannot stress this enough, a very visually interesting system, but coding wise is very very simple. Once the player jumps off the poles, we will just get the velocity of the pole itself, and then any additional inputs the player is making. So if the player is on a horizontal pole, and they are pressing diagonally in a specific direction, we will not only jump off the pole in the velocity amount that we have built up on the pole, so either up or down, but we can also add a force left and right to the player to give some extra mobility to how the player is jumping off the pole, so you're not just jumping upwards and downwards in one specific axis, if you are holding a specific input, you can also build speed horizontally and vertically. The same can be said for a vertical pole, if you're holding up you may get a little upwards boost, if you're holding down you would get less of an upwards boost when jumping off the pole, this just gives the player slightly more control when jumping off the pole. Now you may be asking, hey, how do you get that cool little wobbly feedback on the pole? And I'll tell you, because it's really interesting how I did this. All I did is I blend into an animation of the pole itself, since they're animated. I blend into another animation of the player jumping off the pole. This has the exact same velocity as the regular pole would have, so if the player was at a velocity of 20, and this was stretching the pole completely in one direction, this animation blended into you would have the same poses, but we're going to fix the amount of velocity on the pole so it's no longer feeding back to the player, so we're saving the amount of velocity it was at, we're blending into this new animation that has a fixed velocity, and then what we're doing is we're immediately blending out of this animation in the Unity Animator into another animation static that has the opposite velocity, so if 20 was having the pole face left, 20 is now going to have the pole face right, so we blend into this one, the pole snaps back in the opposite direction, and then I blend into another animation animation static. This is maybe a bit too complicated, but it's worked, so whatever, who cares. We blend into this other animated static, which has the same values as the first animated static, but doubled. So if 20 before was the pole all the way to the left, now 40 is going to be the pole all the way to the left, meaning that this pole has now lost some of its mobility and it's slowing down. And then this will blend into our regular pole static, which has its regular velocity amount, being zero, and then this has the pole completely still. This is how I get a nice little feedback for the player jumping off the pole, and the pole bending and moving around. Usually what I would do is I would have some kind of code system to organize this, but that would be very complicated, so just using the animation setup was significantly easier. Now that the poles were done, I worked on adding the acrobatic rings. These are very simple. When you attach to them, you can either wobble left or right, and this moves your character left or right. This builds momentum, and then allows you to jump off these things. The actual in-game movement for this is very easy. You just build momentum either left or right, and then, once jumping off, you just jump off with this momentum. Or if you don't want to build momentum, you just press space to jump off normally. Very, very simple. This in fact works in a very similar way to the way that the rope system works. Or the player builds speed left or right based on their inputs, but instead of the rope, we just rotate around the axis of the ring, very subtly. In fact, these systems are so similar that instead of making new animations for the ring movement, I just used the rope animations, because they already looked fine and I particularly did not feel like making new animations for the ring animations after I had made the animations for the pole animations, so I just recycled some old animations that worked in this context as well as the rope context. And the only real complexity with this specific ring system that being the base ring system, rings have their own complexity aside from this, is that they have a recoil amount based on your momentum that you've built up. So if you build up momentum trying to move to the right, when going back to zero you'll be pushed backwards 
to minus momentum and then forwards again and then backwards again. Essentially just having the player have a little bit of recoil and wiggle around. This is very easy, we just build up values as the player is moving. But it gives more weight to the actual player's movements when on a ring system. So the rings themselves have two different complexities based on their systems. The first one is the ring breaking system. This is once you have finished using a ring, it will break the second you let go of it or jump off it. This is very simple, I just destroy the momentum platforming acrobatics object and replace it with a visual of the ring breaking. To have this shown in game to make the player have some level of visual feedback to know which rings are going to break and which aren't going to break. The rings that are going to break have a greenish turquoise rust on them, their wooden backing is more overgrown, and there is gaps in the actual ring themselves. So at a glance the player can very easily tell which of these rings is going to break after using them, because once they use a breakable ring for the first time and it breaks, they will say, Boy howdy, that ring sure did break when I let go of it. I guess in the future I will have this information subconsciously implanted in my mind and, and, and remember it in future platforming situations. And this is very easy to code. All I have to do is whenever the player jumps off a ring, check if the ring should break and then feed this information to the ring that the ring is going to break and then just create visual effect, destroy ring. Very, very simple. The second complexity to rings is the rings faller. This is a system, if the ring is supported by something, that it's going to tilt and fall as the player grabs onto it. This I quite enjoy. The actual visual for this is supposed to convey the fact that the ring is supported by something on a pole or a stick and the weight of the player grabbing onto it is pushing it down and making it tilt and fall over. So in the, in the examples the ring is supported by a bunch of sticks, the player grabs onto the ring, they are pulled down on the ring and then the ring tilts. This is very interesting, I really like how this looks, I have a few designs and levels for maybe areas where the player will have to grab onto one of these rings and jump off at specific times to avoid hazards or get through some pesky obstacles. But it also adds a whole lot more of complexity to movements with the rings. It's not just a static thing that the player jumps off, it's a thing that could actually move. The player jumps on a ring, but it's going to tilt into some spikes. Oh no, what do we do? We have to jump off very quickly after grabbing onto this ring to be able to breach a gap, for example, or something like that. Who's to say? The way this works is very simple, there is a ring faller script attached to the ring script itself. The ring script is a child of the faller. As the player is attached to the ring, they will be able to tell that the ring faller has a player attached to it. Then the ring faller will lerp to a value of weight based on the player. This causes it to tilt its rotational direction. And then once it has hit this mount, we play an animation for it extending further past this and then bouncing back again having more weight to the actual object so it's not just a stiff movement there is it exceeding its limit and then bouncing back and then when the player has let go of this we just tilt it back up to normal play an opposite animation of it exceeding its limit back to normal and then bouncing back very very simple there's not a whole lot of complexity to its movement it just tilts from one directional points to another. I can also have these move if I was to maybe have a ring attached to a trail of some kind, but it's mostly just used for a rotational pivot. We have the thing pivot from one direction to another, and then also we have the ring itself not change its rotational direction, so it's always facing the same direction. It's blender time, baby! Time to talk about the animations! The animations for these I quite like. The actual ring animations, as I have said, are an overhaul from the rope animations, so they're the exact same animations, we don't need to talk about those, but the pull animations I like a whole lot. The first pull animations is setting on the pole, this is either the player going from an air post to grabbing the pole vertically or horizontally, this is just them grabbing onto a pole and then going in a sloth-like position to wrap their legs and arms around the pole to support themselves. Very, very easy. The next animations is the spin animations. The spinning animations on the pole. 
In Unity, these are blended into, so we're just going to be blending into these based on the momentum. We're not instantly transitioning into this animation at its max speed, and then we're also being changing the speed of this swinging animation based on the speed of the actual player moving. I quite like how these look. I think they have a nice little weight of the player rotating around the pole. It really gives a feedback of the player actually spinning on a pole, but there was some momentum I feel wasn't conveyed with this animation. They look particularly nice, but if only there was a visual effect to really convey how fast the player is going. I then added a visual effect to really convey how fast the player was going. This is really interesting, I find. All I do is I have different line trails rendered on the player with a particle effect that then moves with the player, so they're attached to the player, and they create a trail as they move. Based on how fast the player is moving, I'll create more of these effects because they destroy themselves over time, or decay over time. So if the player is moving very fast, they'll have more of these blurs and trails, which are just colours of the character being stretched. This really gives the visual impression of the player actually blurring in scene. I think this really, really, really heavily conveys how quickly the player is spinning around the pole. Because if I just have an animation that's played at 8 times speed, it could look nice, but it certainly doesn't really convey the blurry nature of the character moving at such a speed, so this little blur motion does convey that. It also looks neat. The only issue with this is, the second I add alternate colour schemes, I'm going to have to change this visual effect to accommodate each of these colour schemes, but that's a problem for future Slug Glove. And that's about it for Devlog. Despite all of these features being relatively pretty easy to add, I'm pretty proud of how they look in-game. I think the main design with a lot of these acrobatics features that makes them work well is primarily just the visual aspect of these things. I think alone, just as a base coding setup, they're not overly satisfying to use, they're pretty fun, but they're not massively satisfying in opposed to regular movements, but the actual visuals of the character rotating around the poles, or jumping off them, or hanging onto the ring, or the rings breaking, things like this really add to the overall feedback and satisfaction using these features in-game. I think designing an entire level around these features will be pretty fun. In the next part, I will either be doing a video on parallax scrolling, which is background scrolling, floating mobility platforms that swing back and forth on a rope, or I actually make a level and talk about it. If you want to see those videos, you better subscribe, and let me know in the comments below how you're enjoying the new Demon Turf DLC. I've only gone through one level because I bought it yesterday, but boy howdy do I enjoy that game. It's a real hoot and a real holler, you should really play Demon Turf if you haven't, because between you and me, keeping this on the down low on the hush hush, the game kinda rocks.